Hi, everybody. This is Pat Negri. Welcome to the witching hour. Witching hour, that hour of the day when the veil is thin and magic happens. I've got a double team couple of magic to say. I'm honored and thrilled and proud to hear a personal friend of mine. I've known them for several years now. I'm getting ready to see them in Vulture City. But for those of you who don't know, let me introduce you to Jay and Marie Yates. Indeed, they are a husband and wife, internationally known and respected paranormal investigators with a combined lifetime of countless paranormal experiences. Known to many as paranormal investigators, paranormal educators, haunted survivors, paranormal director of Vulture City Town, and paranormal consultants for all things paranormal. With several repeat performances on Travel Channel's hit TV Ghost Adventures, where I, we have not crossed paths, but everybody loves <laughs> our ghost adventures. Um, recognized from their ongoing role on the Haunted Case Files and well over a dozen other appearances on paranormal-related television shows, both recognized for their years of of research, paranormal investigations, relationship with spirits, love, and passion for the supernatural. Their groundbreaking paranormal findings gathered at Vulture City have now been made world famous and has been featured in countless blogs, vlogs, newspapers, magazines, television, networks, radio shows, podcasts, and honorable mention around the world and now here finally on the witching hour. Well, <laughs> that was a lot, but you you guys do a lot and you've been around. Welcome, Jay and Marie. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you for having us, Patty. It's good to see of you again. Of course. Yes, we are getting ready. We are getting ready um, in the very beginning of October to see each other at Vulture City. One of my, it was my second show and one of my favorite shows. For those of you who don't know, Vulture City will be talking about it. Paracon, um, it's in Wickenburg, Arizona, right? Um, not hard to get to from Southern California, I must say. I drive, and it's this old ghost town. And so, how did you? Before we even get started, how did you guys get together? Or no, how did let's go with there to start out? Because I don't really know all of your history. I just know from the second I met you that you were like the ultimate, the ultimate paranormal husband and wife team. You work together. You're experienced together. You've just done everything. How did that happen? Um, I guess I should probably start first. Uh, I, I was born around this. I mean, when people ask me, hey, when was your first paranormal encounter? I, it's as far back as I could remember. So the paranormal was very normal for me as a child growing up. Uh, it was also very terrifying at the same time because I didn't understand it. We didn't have these cool TV shows to watch that we have out today. And it wasn't so mainstream as it is today and commonly and socially acceptable, as you know. So uh, back then as a kid, it was terrifying. Uh, I was scared to death, literally. Um, I, I was brought to several, several counselors, therapists as a child, and they were like, hey, like, he's not crazy, but whatever he's seeing, he definitely believes he's seeing it. Uh, and that was the common consensus for years as I went all the way up into my teenage years. Um, and uh, I had a, a near-death experience uh, on August 13th of 1999 that kind of changed my directions, and I stopped... Uh, running from ghosts and I started chasing them, I guess you could say. Um, I got involved um, with the church, uh, essentially got excommunicated because I talked too much about angels, demons, and paranormal. And I focused on the back of the book instead of the middle of the book and the front of the book. Um, so they weren't too happy with my methods, just to say that. Um, so uh, I was kind of lost, confused, didn't know where to go, had just gone through a really bad breakup. And then a, a, a good high school friend of mine that I knew for years, introduced me to his cousin which is now my wife marie um and uh neither one of us were really ready uh no. for what was going to happen after that but no i wasn't ready i was just <laughs> i was just getting out of divorce and uh was not i was so ready for a single life to be honest with you um and then mysteriously my cousin brings over his best friend and it was it was beyond that we can't even say i don't think we've ever after that day, I think we were almost together almost every single day after that. It was the oddest way. We both fought like crazy when we first met each other. Yeah, if so, anyone's ever been around Marie and I, even today, we are both very opinionated, uh, especially when it comes to the I'm paranormal. I'm always right. I'm usually right. No, she's wrong. He's wrong. Um, but uh, no, but we, we, we definitely uh, we definitely like to banter back and forth, and that's just kind of us, and it works for us. But the paranormal, <laughs> like, uh, she wasn't too uh, big on the paranormal, didn't really understand it. 
um, which is kind of funny now because when we talk about her childhood, she hung it up the haunted bridge and the haunted cornfield by the haunted railroads. She would sneak into the haunted house in the woods as a little kid. Um, and then I, know, I on... just did everything my mother told me not to do. <laughs> so, but, but true story. Uh, when we first got together, um, my now adopted son, Stephen, who is now 20, going to be 26 be on 26, the 13th. Yeah. Saturday. Um, he was actually seeing and, and, and having experience with spirit. And uh, Marie just assumed that because of his autism, that was the issue. Um, and I persisted, no, it wasn't. Um, he became bonding with me like very quickly because we had that mutual understanding of what was happening on the other side. And uh, Stephen would actually sit there and speak to a boy named Nicholas and a man named Snake in our bathroom. And we never understood why. I eventually had a full form encounter with Nicholas. Um, saw Snake, this male, um, very... Um, malignant type energy um and then we finally you moved out of that apartment into our first house and upon moving out what they tell you uh, that, that uh, there was a uh suicide that it was uh, a murder, murder suicide, suicide and of a guy named his uh, street name was snake yeah and his, his son, son, son was, nicholas was, um um when the, it was pretty tragic uh, my son had already called it yeah before that i had seen it um and i think then that probably made you a little bit like more it was skeptic, hard right? i will honestly <laughs> tell you like jay he grew up around the paranormal knowing stuff being scared of it so you sort of i honestly the only ghost i ever heard of was casper the friendly ghost <laughs> on tv i mean so it's like a big thing run around so casper is a big thing like i did know nothing about i was raised really big in church um baptist um so if i swear to you i think i went to church more than i did regular school um, it felt like, um, so I wasn't raised around that kind of stuff. So when he says I did a lot of doing stuff that my mother told me not to do, I tried to do everything that she rebelled. told me. Yeah, I rebelled a lot. So, um, so, but when I met Jay, I, my autistic son, um, was seeing stuff all the time. I just assumed it was because he was autistic. Um, I never put two and two together being paranormal at all until Jay actually came into our lives. And he was seeing the same thing. And then my autistic son that was very close to me became bonded with him and only wanted to be around him. So I started getting jealous. <laughs> like, no, 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 this is my son. Um, and so I did. I learned a little bit more. I started, you know, researching into the paranormal, finding out what it was really about. Um, when we moved into our first house together is when I had my first paranormal experience. It was funny because it was the same night. He was telling me everything about his life. I, I had arranged a date because I was <laughs> planning on proposing to her. And I had I had arranged a date to where it was like a full disclosure date, right? So I had this like campfire in the backyard. We had a beautiful garden in our backyard. Worked really hard on it. Um, and I wanted to kind of like talk about my childhood in depth all the way up to where I was at presently. And just for her in full disclosure that like if you're going to be part of my life, you will inevitably be experiencing these things too. And I just wanted to be honest about it. And uh, almost immediately upon talking about my life stories and, and going in depth about the whole paranormal side of me, um, one of our freezers inside of our detached garage opened up and, and meat started flying out of the freezer across uh, <laughs> the garage. It just, and to be honest with you, the first couple of times I'm like, oh, it's just because those things loosen up the little <laughs> gas stuff on what's are those called those little seals the that... seals i was like oh it just came loose it's fine well when yeah. the third or fourth time when the meat actually like was thrown i don't know how far away from the freezer i was like okay what is going on and i started thinking like okay should i run <laughs> from this relationship because <laughs> it was freaking me out and i was like okay i'm gonna go check on the kids because i i it was just like freaky he was telling me all these stories and then that experience happened so I walked into um, the, it was our side door. It wasn't our front door. It was a side door to get into our house. And as I was doing that, I seen some kind of creature that was walking on two legs. Um, but I always say it looks like a, what's it called? Uh, Gorg yeah. And it was like full, like grayish with these dark black eyes were, it was the darkest black I've ever seen. Like if you actually, I felt like if I kept staring at them, I'd fall into the darkness and never come back out. And I seen it running from it. I, I thought it came from my house and walked and went behind our fence. And I was like, oh, my God, I start screaming. I, 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 I seriously, I've never seen anything like that. And I'm like, don't get me wrong. Arizona has some 
creepy creatures there as animals and stuff. And I'm like, wait a sec, they wouldn't be walking on two legs. And it looked like I, I it was just creepy. And then at the same time, the lights started like. Yeah, we had lawn pulsating. we had lawn lights that were in the front of the house uh, that started to like pulsate <laughs> really bright, almost like they were breathing in and out. And then they blew up. Yep. We had a whole bunch of stuff happen. Long story short, I asked her to marry me a couple months later. She said yes. So I don't know. How, I don't. Something right. <laughs> I guess I really fell in love. <laughs> wow. Wow, yeah. Meat always flies out of freezers. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have that all the time. Uh, that is so, I love that. And you were going to propose because you are really the ultimate couple. I, I, there, I know there's a few other couples out there, but not like you guys. And what you brought, you do, I like that you bring like real research and education and even what you do with Vulture City. So how did Vulture City happen? Um, Vulture City had been on our bucket list for years, but the problem with Vulture was they had an active gold mine like on site, so they would shut it down to the public. It kept switching management and ownership, um, and uh, it was just there were certain teams that were in there that were like exclusive to the place. Um, but our old reverend that was on our team, Paul Lovegrove, um, he, he always kept telling us like guys, you got to go there. You got to get in this place. I've been there before. It's amazing. And it was so hyped that we, of course, saw it on the original appearance on Ghost Adventures years before. And we were like, wow, we'd really love to get in there. And uh, lo and behold, Marie, every time we'd go out to film something or go to an event uh, or an appearance, Marie would go to her hairstylist and they would talk. And ghosts. I miss her very much. Yes, I'm sure you do. I wish I could ship her to Tennessee. Yeah. But uh, she ended up saying, hey, uh, I know the caretaker that stays out there at Vulture City. You should go out there and check this place out. It's super haunted. Like, how did that happen? Um, and uh, in the process of all that, Paul Lovegrove, he passed away. Yeah. Um, kind of feel like he's helping on the other side to make that whole thing happen. But um, we uh, then contacted the, uh, owners. the owners and uh, we went out there. Funny thing, we met with them at uh, Burger King. No, they make fun of us. But, yeah, they hey, make I mean, fun of us because we met, we're very simple. We're not we, bougie. Yeah, we're, we're not, not bougie. Not, that, but we met <laughs> at them at Burger King. King. Yeah, and, off the side of a highway. And I swear we bonded like right then and there um, with them. And I mean, now they're, they're our best friends. Um, mm -hmm. it was just, I mean, the location, <clears throat> when I remember the first time we drove in there, and got to go in there. And we were the only, it was three of us yeah. um, that was there. And I remember just getting out and just taking it all in. And I, you felt like there was even so much. Mid, yeah. Well, so it felt like there was thousands of people just walking around. Yeah. It, um, even though there was only three of us. And it, this was right after the remodel. Like if you've been out to Vulture City, this is right before all these buildings. A lot of them were on the ground. They ended up using the original materials to resurrect them back to their original glory. Um, and they've done quite well, as you've seen, because you've been there. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just think it was just really ramped up. We were, I mean, tons of experience. I mean, the first, first time we went out there, I had the flare and I was flashing it. And by the hanging tree, we got a um, image of a body swinging back and forth on the hanging tree. We caught a guy in the wow. flare walking through the town that wasn't yep. there. I caught uh, a series, I think a series of five photographs um, in the brothel in the doctor's office area at the far end. Uh, I think I took five photos on my third photograph that appears to be a woman reaching out for me um, in the picture in a tall, dark uh, silhouette of a male uh, standing behind her. That's like the first 15 minutes we were there. Yeah. So as you can see, so that obviously um, we, we saw the potential of the place and they were trying to look for ways to get more people out there. Um, and they hadn't really tapped into the whole like paranormal thing. And I'm like, you guys should, you know, open this up for teams and for people to come out here and experience it. Um, and, and let it be more well known than what it is because it, everyone thought it had just pretty much expired. And uh, they just... had a lot more remodeling they wanted to do. There was, uh, when we got there, there was, I don't know, like two or three more buildings that they've actually were able to redo since we've actually been there. Mm -hmm. um, and that was uh, us helping them do like different kinds of events and stuff like that. Um, and the proceeds going right there towards um, all the, um, refurbishing of the building and they just stuff. recently uh we just moved over the old ball mill um from the mine side of the property over to the vulture city ghost town property so for those who haven't mm -hmm. been out there uh yet or this year yep. uh for the paracon you'll be able to experience the entire um the uh well then the generator building the i know generator the generator yeah. the generator was already there last year for people that came this year the building is actually going to be around it 
So you'll get to actually see the true building. And then that generator, um, back when the mine was going, um, a, uh, it was two brothers. One brother got stuck in it and started going in there, and the other guy went to go grab his brother. And I do believe he yeah, lost both, his arm. They both, I think, tragically died. Well, no, them. only one did. It was one passed away. The other one lost his arm or something. But there's like more that. stories yeah. uh, with that particular bill. But anyways, but that's kind of how we got our start wow. there. And we just fell in love with the place. The, the spirits uh, and ourselves ended up developing really serious relationships. And Patty, I'm sure you can understand that. Um, and some of the viewers out there today that like, I mean, we have always viewed ghosts as people too. Ghosts using that word loosely, right? Um, yeah. And and uh, ghosts ghosts are people too, and you, and you develop relationships with them. Yeah. And then one of the hardest parts of leaving Arizona and coming out to Tennessee was saying goodbye for a little bit to some of them because we developed such amazing relationships. Yeah. And, and people that don't understand are watching this like, what are you talking about? But really, we developed some really great relationships with the spirits there in the town and. Uh, uh, it's it's hard to be away from it. It's almost but a late loop, you know, saying goodbye to your friends. It's I mean, just it as was, hard saying it goodbye was. to friends as it was to some of the ghosts that we had come um, yeah. friends with, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, my experience, I think they, they don't have much time and space on the other side. So it's harder for us, the living ones, just like death is harder on those left living than that. They probably just thought you walked away a minute and a half ago and then you're showing up again. Yep. So That's it's just for us that you get, we get to miss them. And I completely get, we got so much, I've done the last two or three, I'm not even sure of Vulture City. And everywhere you go, there's you're getting evidence, you're getting feelings, you're getting, you know, the the, the mediums, the sensitives of the group are going, oh, and, and the tech people of the group are going, oh, oh and everything's <laughs> coming together. Yeah. Everything's coming together. Yeah. It, it's been great. I mean, we were just out there in March. Uh, Johnny was out there, John Zaffis, and, and yes. we did a little public event. Um, and uh, John got to finally experience it. He's a great friend of ours. So I was glad he was able to get out there and kind of like, experience it but just like clockwork though vulture city seems to never disappoint um we've done a really good job i think um with everyone that's out there and the team of people that make this all work um by really focusing and driving home the importance of respecting not only the history and the buildings and, and the artifacts but also the spirits there and if there's anything that we wanted to, to imprint in that location more than anything is just showing the utmost respect to the other side because they've been so generous to us yeah. by by you know giving us great evidence of their existence and, and and sharing those experiences with thousands of people um personally and then you know probably millions with all the the different shows that's been featured on now yeah no it's a beautiful place so everybody you there is still time to come now so if somebody a lot of my audience they're some are paranormal some are more witchy and from my spiritual world so if somebody's going okay i've i uh, am I going to get, uh, I, I, if I go to this ghost town and you guys are seeing all these ghosts, if they're a little worried, how do you, and again, to me, everything, so long as there's respect, everything's going to be fine. So what do you guys do? Do you guys have uh, like protection techniques or teach people, you know, right. how to be, how to be around spirit world? <clears throat> well, usually when I'm talking to anyone that's coming out to the town for the first time is, as I stress the importance of you are making a collect call to the other side. And it's important that you say goodbye before leaving here. It's important to say hello. It's important to say thank you. And it's very important to say goodbye. Because I think the biggest problem with any paranormal investigator, enthusiast, is that they go into these locations, they make that collect call, and they just leave the phone there. And they just walk away. And then they wonder why they have <laughs> residual effects afterwards. It's because you never properly said goodbye. And I think if your intent is right and your respect is where it should be, um, you're not going to have much of an issue. But then again, Ghosts are people too. So some people are jerks in life. They're jerks in death. And that's about maybe makes up 1% of Vulture City. Um, and, and, and most of those, um, are, they're, they're more specific to both Marie yeah. and I um, that they'll kind of come at us pretty strong. Maybe because they're ones that didn't appreciate all the exposure to the town or they didn't appreciate <laughs> all the people that are now coming back into the town. I'm not quite sure. And that's something that I would well, like to Well, you have to, to remember know. back in the day when we are speaking to some of these spirits that were there. Was that thunder? Yes. Sorry, we have thunder going on. and up Sun's here. out and it's thundering. I, I don't know. And wow. I <laughs> um, it loves their storms here. Um, but um, back in the day when the gold mine was going and the rush and everything, well, these men, especially it's a lot of women now, they're out here doing a lot of stuff. And they look at us like, why are you in our building? You're not allowed to be in here. 
So they are harsh a little bit more on women. Like I get it quite often. I feel Especially like women I'm that unwanted. Are more susceptible yeah. to the other side, more sensitive, more gifted, um, and, and feeling engaging that energy with spirit. And I'm not saying anything dangerous. You, there has been some things that happened to me, um, a couple things, but nothing like that. But I will say I feel like oh, sometimes I'm unwanted. But you have to remember, these men were working their butts off, and the men, women were not allowed to be back there. So people have got to remember the history of the stuff. So that's what you're getting with the spirits and everything like that, I believe. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. There is that 1% that you can catch something that, you know, I do believe a lot of people have been talking about a portal on the, you know, on the mind side um, and stuff like that over there. So, I mean, there's always, and that's, I'm saying it's ongoing research um, there at Vulture and we enjoy it. We bring in all, so many people. And that's another reason why we bring the Paracon. Uh, para I mean, we get to bring so many talented um, people and all that do different stuff, just like yourself, Patty. Everybody does something. They um, they maybe worship, not worship, but, you know, like well, we have, teachings we have, we have, of different kind of methods yeah, and everything of, like that. Like, cultures, backgrounds, belief systems that come out there. What, the, what makes the Paracon yeah. so unique is, and with the town being so unique is that, yeah. You guys kind of get to share in that experience and to share in that that uh, discovery because we're still discovering. And um, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many hundreds of days that I've spent out there just in the town. And then and then when I bring people out to the town to experience it themselves, or we have new people coming in, um, it, it, these things come out. They talk. They communicate. They interact. Yeah. Um, sometimes I will say there. a lot of uh, a lot of our friends um, use crystals and you know, sage and all these different things to, you know, keep themselves, you know, guarded and stuff. And that's wonderful because I know a lot of my good friends, they honestly have faith in that and they do it like Jay and I, to be honest with you, I don't, we don't have faith in that. So it doesn't work for us. It doesn't protect us. To be honest with you, our faith is in God. Um, so that's what we use when we're out there. Um, but I that's mean, much different today than what it used to be. Cause yeah. I can say that in the beginning of all of these shenanigans, <laughs> Um, we kind of kind of went in like full bore, um, unprotected, ungrounded, just like, come on, come at me. I was very, I used to be very aggressive investigator, um, especially yes. with malignant uh, type hauntings and especially things dealing um, with His family. son used to say, you're just like Zach. Zach and you are alike. <laughs> and, and, and I don't, and I don't necessarily take pride in the fact I've learned a lot over the years. Vulture was one of the places that really helped me to grow and mature a lot more as well over the years of being there and just realizing like, wow. Like meet people with the same kind of way you, the energy you would want to be met with, and you much have much different, you know, outcomes. But, um, but as far as like protection, like we we definitely, um, I mean, we're grounded by our faith and our God, um, and that seems to work for us. But everyone has their own thing, you know. Um, yeah, I know. I've been more grounded with the um, with Earth a little bit more now. I will say, you do I a ended lot up of meditation. Yeah, I do a lot of meditation and stuff like that. I. Tennessee is definitely a good place for the running water. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> I will say I love the running water. I love the forest and all that out here because it really does energize me a little bit more. Than... Which was part of the reason I'm moving. Out yeah, <laughs> so, the yeah. sun really sucked it out a lot. My energy. That's so uh, it was hot, it was hot, in, hot in Arizona. No, yeah. and I believe 100 percent with you. Do I? I see energy, and it kind of doesn't matter what title. Oh, this is God going with a traditional Christian, going yeah. with energy or crystals. It's it's the energy of goodness. It's of light, yeah. of protection. It's of faith. So it doesn't, what titles you put. So I'm of that exact. That's when I started my school. That's exactly why we did it. We have from priests and preachers and witches and so yeah. coming from love, coming from this. So, so people now, so people are going, okay, I want experiences. Tell everybody a little bit about how they can get to Vulture City, when it is, where it is, you know. So this year, what Where do you the, um, October seventh. <laughs> it's October seventh through the ninth um, of this year. Um, it's in Wickenburg, Arizona, and that's probably about forty-five minutes from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, sort of going south, west a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's Wickenburg is a very a smaller town. It's gorgeous. Um, really into the western um and <laughs> they embrace their cowboy their right? cowboy yeah. in side. so if you like but that vulture kind of city the town itself is maybe what like 15 minutes outside of wickenburg yeah. so typically people will stay in um the lodges in wickenburg and then come into the town but on the the seventh we have the daytime um private um exclusive uh ghost mm -hmm. tour and hunt during the day before the meeting yeah group. we do a daytime ghost hunt is because 
even myself now, I will say I have a hard time staying up at night anymore. Uh, <laughs> I want to go to bed at nine o'clock. Um, and people say, well, you're a ghost hunter. Oh, okay. Well, I, you know what? I'm tired. I want to go to bed. So to be honest with you, if you're actually a paranormal investigator, you do know that, sorry to say, you could see a ghost and speak with one at one o'clock in the morning and one o'clock in the afternoon. It doesn't matter yeah. what time. Um, we do it at night because it's a lot quieter, no lights, no sounds, all that kind of stuff. So, um, but we do a daytime one now for a lot of people because they can't do the nighttime. And, and it was requested by a lot of people that they wanted more exclusivity um, and whatnot. Um, and uh, it's definitely, I think we capped that at like, what, like 40 people? Yeah, we only, no, 30. 30 so, people. 30 people. So. so, and we do a tour as well. So we bring out the owners. This is a chance where you get to be personal with the owners of Vulture as well. Because they're very private and they don't really associate really too much. They let Jay and I do a lot of the speaking and doing stuff. So, um, but um, they'll be out there doing the tour as well with us. Um, so you get to hear about the history of the tour plus do the go. And that running. segues right in on Friday night into the meet and greet. Um, so that's a great and time. And we got to, Patty and doing there, Patty. table tipping for <laughs> yes. the first time um, actually done in Vulture City. So we're excited. Um, to be honest with you, I've never experienced table tipping. I've never um, did one of the things ever. So, ever yeah, so I'm excited. I've heard a lot of great stories. Yes, yeah. I've heard amazing stories, especially from John and Andrea Perrin. I mean, and, and Andrea Perrin will be there with us. Um, yeah. so it's, a, it's a great opportunity. The meet and greet, we kind of set it up where, like, you're able to kind of come and and, and chat with the, the speakers and the guests that we have out there. So, and then we have food and then they have like the a bar bonfire. For... We have the bar, everything. So it's more or less where you get to be one-on-one -on -one with a lot of our guest speakers. A lot of people see these um, guest speakers on TV, radio shows, all that, but they never get to actually physically talk to them. So this is your chance where you get to lay back. Each of you have a drink. If you don't drink, well, have a soda and just actually chat yeah. with each other while you're in a haunted ghost town so um it's it's an amazing evening um, it's a whole weekend of events so yeah. saturday we have all day vending we have all day speakers uh patty i think on both days is doing something one uh yes um on saturday she's doing her gallery gallery reading and then on yeah. sunday she's doing a seance and yeah. it's the first time seance has ever happened actually at vulture so yeah. it's it's a lot, exciting. Of, lot of firsts there a lot so of firsts. yeah <laughs> and i um, I am so excited about table tip. My style of seance is very spiritualist where all that got started. But my table, my dining room table weighs like 300 pounds at least. So there's not a lot of tipping there. So I can't <laughs> wait to get there and have a non 300 pound table. Like, oh yeah, this might tip. <laughs> we'll tip it together. So yeah, I am so excited and the best of people. And again, people you reckon you really do. I just had Andrea on the show. I've had John, I've had all the, on the show. And thrilled to finally have you. Andrea's so, amazing, dude. I love Andrea. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She, she's got a great, great energy about she it. She reminds me a lot about you, Patty. It's she when does, you first, actually, yeah. When you first, I remember meeting you at Doug's event in Virginia City. And that's where we met. Yeah. And um, and actually, Doug was one of uh, the first ones that gave us a deal at a, a, a con. And I remember you saying Doug actually invited you out for the first time. So yes. it's like Doug sort of gave us both our go out there to do the events. Normal, yeah, um, events. So um, I remember meeting you and I, you, I don't know, you just have this love yeah. and peace energy around you. And I remember I got to meet Andrea for the first time last year. Yeah, we were in the um, mass Paracon. Paracon for Sam's um you came uh, running back to me like, oh, my God, you got to meet Andrea. This is this energy around her. Like. She just, it was just <laughs> full of love. And it was just it like, is. oh, my gosh, when you go near it, all you can do is just smile. There is no anything. And, and she's between, hilarious. Too. Yeah, and she's yeah, hilarious. She, yeah. So it was just, I mean, it, I really wanted to have her out there at Vulture. I really wanted to. We try to do something different every year. Um, there are some people that we do have. Like, we have, we honestly, we love our connection with Paraflex. Um, so it's like, we love it that you guys are part of Vulture City. I mean, you guys are family now. So, um, yes. that's exciting for us. Yes. We have a yes. lot of the, the shows on Paraflex. Yeah. We, this year we had a couple of the teams that actually have shows on Paraflex. So you get to watch them and meet them while you guys come out to, uh, the Paracon this year. Um, yeah, and I'm going to be doing some lives. I'm going to be doing some stuff for Paraflex. So it's yay. And then Saturday night, we have the big ghost hunt. Yeah, the big ghost so hunt. And you get to investigate with these celebrities that you've seen on TV. Um, so it's going to be, 
Yeah, celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know sometimes when people say celebrities, they look at it. To me, when you're in the paranormal field, I look at anyone that has like a show and all that, and they go out there, they are celebrities. I mean, it doesn't mean, oh, you have to be, I'm sorry, yeah, we know Zach and, you know, have a mad respect for him. But, you know, all of us have done something, and I um, have so much respect for even one to just have a, a paranormal team. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, and no. that's what we try to do. Yeah, we, we, we don't try to just make it all like celebrity top heavy. We try no. to make sure that we have people that, you know, are well respected in the community, um, that are doing great things. I mean, you don't have to be a TV personality no. to be like important to, to us. I mean, like, no. I mean, these, but we have a great group of people. And if you talk to anyone that's ever been out to the conference, we usually have some really good feedback. Uh, tickets are available right now at VultureCityParacon.com. That's VultureCityParacon.com. Um, so we do have some tickets still available. Um, uh, I will tell you the seance and the gallery reading is almost sold out. So if you want to, you know, be with Patty and experience that stuff, you in. might want to get your tickets for those. Um, yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's going to be amazing. Cause again, we are, in, it's like a movie set. It's an old it really Western town. So <laughs> we That's where we're doing it with lots of ghosts. So what better place to do? And again, yeah. like you said, we're not in the, the serial killers, house, prison, boys, right, whatever. Right. It, the ghosts are people. Like we're minors, and th so it's really cool. So yes, yeah, sign up. More thunder. Um, More thunder. Sorry. I can't wait. I'm counting down the days. <laughs> I hear. I hear. Um, well, I can't wait to see you guys. You are some of my f absolute favorite people, and so yeah. Para people, for those of you who don't know, we are a special group of, yes. of people, just like the witchy group and the spiritual group. It, we're a special, loving, like-minded family that we've created. And you're right about Wickenburg. I remember when we pulled up last year, we all met, I think it was like a karaoke restaurant. I'd never yes. seen more cowboy hats in one day. Ever. Oh, that's right. Every yeah, guy is like... Little it's yeah. like again we're in a movie i love it yeah. and stefan actually uh karaoke for us yeah, yeah so yes he did fun. it was awesome yeah, that was a so good time. you guys want to join us so thank you jay thank you marie mm -hmm. again you guys check them out and where can people find you follow you on social media and all that kind of stuff as well as uh, vulture city you can find us at yatesfamilyhaunting.com um that's our page exclusive to her and i um you can find us on social media under jay and marie yates uh, all the different platforms um, our paranormal team, that's thecopscrew.com, thecopscrew.com. Um, you can find our team there, but uh, we're pretty easy to get a hold of. You yeah. I think we are. <laughs> we're very open. We're one of those open book people. Um, we don't judge, so you don't have to worry about any of that coming from us. We're very open mm -hmm. to so many um, things, and that's just something we always yeah. – at the beginning, we weren't like that. <laughs> I will say that. We were very cookie cutter. Yeah, we were cookie cutter at the beginning but when you grow and just you know in life and then the paranormal um that's what you learn to do we met a lot of good people though so we're really happy yeah. i will say if anybody knows paranormal conference and there's so many good ones i mean there really is um i know michigan paracons coming up in august um this month and then we have mm -hmm. uh gettysburg batch and we're, Jay and I are actually going to be that one. And I know you're going to be at Michigan Paracon. Yeah, we're at um, Michigan. So those are two amazing ones. But those are amazing places like Vulture City Paracon is to go. And if you're into the paranormal and you've never done it, you don't know, that's your start. Go to these Paracons um, and meet, yes. um, meet up with people. Go to the events. Do the ghost hunts and stuff. That's the best way to do it. I've seen a lot of paranormal teams form from these conferences. Doug used to have conferences all the time. I'd seen people come out as guests, and then the next year they got a couple people together and they start forming this team. And by the third year, they have a full-fledged paranormal team. So these people that are looking to get their start. We're not the only conference out there that has that capability of you meeting these good people. Um, we're just one of the many. Um, I'd like to think that we're one of the better ones, I hope. <laughs> but, one of the uh, best. The with, be really one of the best because yes. you are at a haunted location. You are at a historic location. Um, I mean, they're all great and they're all different, just like all people yes. are great sure. and people are different. But um, sure. some are in big casino type buildings and things like that. It's it's not like you get to walk into the saloon kind of thing like right, you do right. at Vulture yeah. City. So you guys give the whole experience with, you know, the best of the best people and at a place that the spirits are so i will honestly say it's our paranormal family and i will honestly stick to it um we have an amazing paranormal family um and you're part of that 
It's kind of like I a mean, little family reunion. Each yeah, year, really. every year it's like a big family reunion, and it it's is. nice to see it. I know the OC Paracon is a weekend before ours, so anybody that's in California can't make it to Arizona, you go to OC Paracon. I mean, and I know you're, I think you're going to be at that one as well. I'm going to so be at I'm that gonna, one too. It's traveling yeah, season. So, you know, we're getting near Halloween. We, <laughs> <laughs> you've got to love Halloween time, right? I got to love, woo, go see. <laughs> I, I wake up, I don't know where I am. That's why I have the Where's Patty segment. It's like, I have no idea. Um, but again, everybody check them out. Um, Jay and Marie Yates, Vulture City Paracon. And I, I'm going to be posting lots of stuff. I'm already posting stuff. They are it's a great one to come out to meet some amazing people, meet some ghosts. So thank you. Thank you both for coming to the witching hour. Oh, thank, thank you, you for, for having us. us. It's an honor.